words. It's part of the introduction. There must be a reason for the present day disuse of herbs and the popularity of chemical and vaccine therapy. Personally, I think that apart from the prevalent lack of time or laziness, which makes the modern farmer loath to busy himself with the preparation of his own medicines, the cause is modern commercialism and the power of advertisement. The present day farmer has been educated to consider disease as inevitable and the only scientific care cure as being in the artificial remedies of the modern veterinary surgeon who through over rigid orthodox training and himself under the influence of advertisement is too often a mere vendor of the products of a vast and powerful chemical and serum manufacturers for the vested interests in chemical it for the best why do i keep tripping over this it's like it doesn't want me to read it it's like something doesn't want me to read it the present day farmer has been educated to consider disease as inevitable and the only scientific cure as being the artificial remedies of the modern veterinary surgeon who through over rigid orthodox training and himself under the influence of advertisement is too often a mere vendor of products of the vast and powerful chemical and serum manufacturers. That is a really bad sentence, by the way, Juliet, the author. <laughs> um, for the vested interests in modern medicine are stupendous. True now too, yeah? Businessmen who have never owned an animal fattened like breeding toads upon the ailments of farm stock that need not have known sickness at all if they had been allowed daily access to the herbs of the fields. The true farmer should not, the true farmer should cultivate his own medicines in his own fields and he should not consider himself as being a farmer even if he has to resort to outside help to keeping his animals in health and healing them when in sickness science is proving the ruination of true farming the only thing that i and countless others have noted as flourishing alongside science is disease disease of the earth disease of the crops disease of the animals and of the people who feed on the diseased produce hmm? skipping ahead um a good farmer her teacher told her um in his book pleasant valley louise bromfield <laughs> who is earlier described as one of her mentors said a good farmer in our times has to know about more things than a man in any other profession he should be a biologist a veterinary a mechanic a botanist a horticulturist and many other things as well he has to have an open mind, eager and ready to absorb new knowledge, new ideas, and new ideals. Yet how many modern farmers are botanists? Very few indeed. The great Dr. Paralysis von Hoheimen forsook the medicinal universities of the world and lived with the gypsies and peasant herbalists in many parts of Europe in order to learn the true medicine. It is from such people that I've obtained much of the instruction in herbal medicine and rearing of animals from the gypsies and peasants of Mexico, France, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Israel, Turkey, Algeria, Tunisia, French and Spanish Morocco and England. In all these countries, I have sought gypsy and peasant herbal treatments. And grateful I am to my herbal teachers. They have taught me far more than I ever learned during nearly four years of scientific studies at two modern universities. And it was in thankfulness that I turned away from the places where vivisection is practiced. The crying of animals in vivisection laboratories, she puts in parentheses and exclamation point, and went instead like Pericles to the green fields and woods for my medical education. All the treatments prescribed in this book are on herbal medicine are truly herbal and all are harmless. For as a result of careful observation, I have the strongest objection to using violent chemicals for the so-called cure or relief of any form of disease. Chemicals such as the sulfon sulfonamide group, which are habitually more dangerous to the delicate tissues of the animal body than the disease for which they are frequently pre prescribed as cured. Um, my professor declared emphatically that the curing of all the ailments of his patients is often a simple task in comparison to freeing their bodies of the accumulation of chemical drugs lodged in their tissues, the drugs derived 
from orthodox medical chemotherapy from the poison sprayed on fruits and vegetables by the modern farmer or placed in tinned and bottled foods as preservatives. Many of his patients are Americans and the present day America, the chemist seems to be running amok, spraying and poisoning everything edible. In herbal medicine too, we have violent acting substances usually derived from poisonous groups of plants. I have excluded them altogether, influenced perhaps by the wild animals which instinctively avoid the poisonous herbs. And also nature has provided always a gentle herb to do the work in a place where the ones in place of the violent, the ones of violent action. Furthermore, I wanted to be able to state with absolute certainty that this book, uh, that this is a book of safe treatments and have excluded all poisonous herbs. I can declare so in truth, there is not one treatment in this, er in this herbal which could cause any farmer to declare that through using the prescribed herbs, he lost an animal. The herbs advised are all bene benevolent and beneficial and will do no harm. Um, yeah. Um, 